Well, greetings everybody. Welcome to our King's channel. And what I was trying to do, Nick from Signs and Wonders channel, discussed short videos and I was attempting to bring out what self-righteousness is, wherein I would declare 99.9% percent of the entire earth has no understanding of what self-righteousness actually entails and there was just no way I could do this in a minute or less. It will take a few minutes but I tell you if you'll just stick with me I will explain some things to you in your scriptures that may blow your mind when you realize how you have called others self-righteous, thought others to be self-righteous, and probably was called yourself to be self-righteous, wherein you may have felt the flames of fury from hearing such a thing called to you, even though you have very little understanding of what self-righteousness actually is. And being honest with yourself, just give me a few minutes using your scriptures, and I'll show you what self-righteousness actually is and it's an invented term by man you can't find self-righteousness or self-righteous in the scriptures there are implications of it I'll show you that but as far as the term itself my friends it's alluded at mankind as to the true meaning of what even righteousness is since the year 325 AD this common era until these last days when me and my other 143,999 brothers were called out that we may learn so we can explain and show to all who have an interest the truths that are hidden in the scriptures. And if you put your trust in the scriptures, you'll love them. Now here in Matthew, Matthew 5 verse 20, it shows, it says, and this is Messiah speaking. He says, for I say to you, and he's not just speaking to his disciples. He's speaking to everybody. It's written in the scriptures right now for you to read and it applies to you too, my friends. My king said, for I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. And you've got preachers out there, these self-righteous preachers, claiming that if you're good, well, you'll go to heaven. Heaven, and that helps you pay those lying Egyptians more money so they could learn more lies to get more money that you're willing to pay so you could learn more wonderful imaginations of mankind. And that's what self-righteousness is. It's an invention. It's a phrase that most everybody on the earth uses in their own language, and yet only a few on the earth today have an understanding whatsoever as to what right Righteousness is. Here you can see in Deuteronomy 6, verse 25, it says, Then it will be righteousness for us if we are careful to observe all these laws of the commandments before Yahweh our Father, as He has commanded us to do. That, my friend, is what righteousness is. It's the observance of our Heavenly Father's laws and commandments. And when Messiah was speaking in Matthew 5, verse 20 here, that unless your keeping of these laws and commandments, unless your obedience to this every living word found between the two covers, found on most every book of scriptures, unless you're being careful to observe the laws and commandments, exceeds, unless it goes beyond the keeping of the laws and commandments, of the scribes and Pharisees, and my friends, they were adding to the laws by the traditions they were handing down from their forefathers who imagined that these traditions would let them go to heaven, and nobody's going to heaven. And Messiah further saying, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. It doesn't say you'll go to heaven. It doesn't say anyone's going to heaven. Our Messiah said nobody's going to heaven. You'll seek him, and he even said you'll find him. He says, but you can't go where he is. Even King David never made it to heaven. But the kingdom here of heaven is coming to earth. Man will inherit the earth, my friends. And unless you're keeping of the laws and commandments, our 
our Messiah is speaking, and when he speaks, if you don't keep the laws and commandments and you have very little understanding of what my king is saying, and he even told those that were listening to him that unless they believed Moshe, they wouldn't understand his language. They wouldn't hear his word. Even though he's speaking like I am, they wouldn't understand what he's saying unless he believed Moshe. He said it right here too. He said, for I say to you, unless that your belief in what Moshe had written and your obedience and adherence to the every living word, unless it exceeds that which the scribes and Pharisees believe that Moshe had written, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, Deuteronomy 6 verse 25. Then it will be righteousness for you, for me, for us, if we are careful to observe all these laws and commandments before our Father. Now our Messiah taught his disciples the same thing. Yachin honor John 14, 15, Messiah says, If you love me, keep my commandments, keep my laws. Well, what laws did he have that he was keeping? Yachin honor John 15 verse 10 says, if you keep my commandments, if you keep my laws, if you, if you live by my every living word, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my father's laws and his commandments, and because I keep my father's laws and commandments that I command you to keep, I abide in his love. And my friends, you'll abide in his love too if you do the same. That's what Yachanan was speaking years after my king had laid his life down and taken it back up again. And yet Yachanan or John is still teaching the same things Messiah taught and none of the Egyptians can see it again. Yachanan or John's writing here. He says, if you know that he, that Messiah is righteous, that he keeps the laws and commandments, if you know that the Messiah lived by the every living word and commanded us to do the same, if you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. Born again, yes, those who keep the laws and commandments, just like Deuteronomy 6 verse 25 said. It will be your righteousness for you. So my friends, what is self-righteousness? Hopefully you're starting to understand it without me even having to say. You're putting the pieces together, and I'm going to toss some mortar in there for you shortly. First Yachin on her, First John 3, 7 says, Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices keeping the laws and commandments is righteous. Why? Because they practice to be just as our Messiah by practicing righteousness. By keeping the every living word our Father commanded us to live by so that he could give us life everlasting in the kingdom in not life everlasting in the flames of Gehenna. Now, if you look right up here, a couple verses up, it tells you, my friends, in verse 4, whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness. And sin is lawlessness. And sin and lawlessness, my friends, is not righteous. Our king never sinned because he is righteous. However, he or she who sins, he or she who practices lawlessness or self-righteousness is of the devil. For the devil has sinned, committed lawlessness, has been self-righteous because the devil has thought that what she did would gain her rulership over all things and take our father's seat. It didn't work out, my friend. That was the first act of self-righteousness because what Satan believed was all right for her to do came from her own self. It did not come from the righteousness of our father. 
Our father said clearly, my thoughts are not your thoughts. And we were told by the prophets of old all the way up through to the end of the scriptures that we should model ourselves after Messiah. Our Messiah modeled himself after our heavenly father by obeying his every living word. And our Messiah was not self-righteous. No, his righteousness was from Father Yahweh. And that's how he became a son of of Father Yahweh. If you eat pork, if you eat the unclean things, if you think murder is all right, whatever label that you put on it, family planning, it doesn't matter. You're being self-righteous because the law says thou shalt not murder. And if you find an excuse to do so, well, it's self-righteousness. You believe you're right when true righteousness is right before your very eyes. To live by the give or take 613 laws, which therein shows you how to keep the Ten Commandments. And I'm talking the laws that apply to you some of the laws may apply to your neighbor that you also have to keep but the laws that apply to you is our father's righteousness on you which makes you righteous if you practice and if you don't go out from under the cover of what our father told you to do or not to do then you are righteous and not self-righteous unless you go out from that cover out into the world and partake of the world wherein again you become self-righteous. Please look up righteous in the scripture. Here in the New King Jane perversion, it occurs 262 times in 248 verses this word righteous. Read what it says and hopefully now with Deuteronomy 6 verse 25 as the key. And if you want to be righteous and not self-righteous, the only way to do it is adherent to Deuteronomy 6 verse 25. And again, using that knowledge to plug into these 262 times and 248 verses in the New King James Perversion alone, in most instances, you can plug where it says righteous to the definition that was given in Deuteronomy 6 verse 25 or instance genesis 7 1 then our father said to noah come into the ark you and all your household because i have seen that you are keeping my laws and commandments you're living by the every word that enoch and other righteous men had taught you in front of me father yahweh in this generation and abraham here in genesis 8 23 came near and said would you also destroy the ones that are keeping the laws and commandments with diligence that are putting on your righteousness living by this every word that was taught by the righteous men of old and by you father yahweh will you destroy those who seek you by doing what you command them to do will you destroy them with the wicked? Verse 24, suppose there were 50 who were still keeping your laws and commandments within the city. Would you also destroy the place and not spare it for 50 practicers of those like Yachanan said in 1 Yachanan 3, 7, little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness, the keeping of laws and commandments, is righteous just as Messiah is righteous. That's why in 1st Yachanan chapter 2, 3 through 6 tells you straight out. Now by this we know that we know the Messiah or the Father. You can't see the Father except through the Son. Now by this we know that we know Him if we keep His laws, His commandments. This is Yachanan after Messiah was allegedly the one who cleansed the pit and said, oh, it's okay for y'all to eat pork chops now in Jerusalem where our father said not to even touch it. But the imaginations of men make you think that the disciples were teaching it's okay to break the laws and commandments, but it's not true. It's the imaginations of men who are self-righteous, teaching things that are outside of the scriptures and the laws and bylaws, the statutes and ordinances of our heavenly father 
that makes you righteous if you keep them. Now by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Are you wearing these, my friend? The tassels, the fringes, the seat seats, or the lots? Are you wearing these every day? Are you eating butter and honey? Do you keep the seventh day Sabbath? Are you going to keep the feasts of our Heavenly Father? Well, if you keep Christmas, you're self-righteous. If you keep Mother's Day, you're self-righteous. You're doing things other than what is in the laws and commandments, and you don't know Him. Because it shows in verse 4, He who says, I know Him, I know the Jesus, or the God, or the Lord, or Father Yahweh, or Yahuwah, or Yahuwah, or Yahusha, or if you say that you know those that are supposed to be the Father and His righteous Son, if you say you know them or Him, and you do not keep His commandments or His laws, meaning you're a sinner and you're lawless, well, it also means that you are a liar, and it says so right there. And the truth is not in you, but whoever keeps his word. Matthew 4.4 4 tells you, you can't live by Messiah alone. He's the bread of life. You can't live by bread alone. You can't live by thinking that the Jesus did it all for you. Messiah said he didn't. And then if you want life, you have to live by the every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. And those words are written here. But whoever keeps his word truly, the love, which is also the keeping the laws and commandments, as it says in 2 Yachanan or 2 John, truly the keeping of the laws of commandments of the Father is perfected in Him. Psalms 19 says the law is perfect. It converts the soul. Matthew, or Matthew 5, the very last verse says that you are to be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Do you or do you not believe the words that are written, my friends? If you don't believe them, you're self-righteous. So to top this off, let's take a look here in Luke 18, verse 9. It gets to around a definition, you know, sort of like the prayer that were offered by the fellow with his long tassels and such, thinking he was better than the fellow that knew he was self-righteous and was repentive of it, showing they both was self-righteous and they had one of them there was more acceptable to becoming righteous, to accepting our Father's every living word than the other self-righteous fellow who thought he had all the answers already. But here in Luke 18, 9 says, And he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. And my friends, you can't despise others and be righteous because our Messiah told you that you're to love everybody. You're supposed to. And I'm not talking... The kind of love where you got to have them over for dinner. But the kind of love, if you see their asses falling down under a gray burden, that you're going to stop and give a hand. But mostly our walk is to learn to trust in our Messiah, the true one. And again, my friends, when you become self-righteous, began on the day of your birth, everyone is born into the self-righteousness. Revelation 12, 9 explains emphatically that the whole world is is deceived. Everybody. Here in Isaiah 64, 6. And you can believe this, my friends, but we are all like an unclean thing and all of our. Now that's the closest you can get to saying self. Self-righteousness. All self-righteousnesses. All our righteousnesses are like filthy rag. Now, my friends, in those days, filthy rags was a different terminology than what they use today. Today, they call them things like, and if you got youngins, you might want to cover their ears or something. Personally, I thought they was firecrackers when I was growing up, because I was lighting the fuse, throwing them out the back door when my mama got a hold of me, boy. But anyway, what a filthy rag was back then was something, 
a woman would wear and utilize during the time of the month where their bodies were detoxifying. That's what a filthy rag is to our Father, is your, our, your, their, adding to the laws and commandments, thinking that whatever they do will be all right because the Jesus loves them, or the Allah loves them, or the Buddha loves them, or whoever it is that's out there loving them, that it's completely all right for them to not live by the every living word of our Heavenly Father, by his contractual agreement that if you do, then you'll have right to the tree of life and to inherit and go through the gates of that great city. But we are all like an unclean thing. Yes, even I. I get packages. I just got a package. And I went and washed my hands right after it, but it made me unclean because those that delivered it, someone on the way has committed unclean acts, whether it was eating a ham sub, bacon for breakfast, or lewd acts or something, wherein they pass on the uncleanness to items and packages and such that just infected me. So yes, we are all like an unclean thing, and any and all of our not adhering to that which makes us righteous is our own self-righteousnesses and to our Father, they are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf in our iniquities, our sins, our trespasses, our lawless acts are like the wind have taken us away. But from where? Well, one thing is from being a decent human being. And worse than that, from the gates of that great city, my friends. So with that, I hope you all still love me. I love you. I'll be praying for you all, always. I also wanted to mention that at the time that this video was posted, Larry and Diane Martusi as well as Nick and his wonderful bride from Signs and Wonders channel. Both will acquire a home after I acquire what is mine, which is Texas. And though it's Sabbath, and I'm not giving anything away on Sabbath, this has already been thought out. I prayed about it for a while. But that's because they helped me. And this man, Everett Tripodis, from Atlanta, Georgia, as it shows here on Channel 2 News, the city came to his property without proper notification with the wrong address on a demolition order and they demolished everything this man owns. This could have been stopped if people would only listen to the cries I've been crying out with. Now Larry and Diane Martusi did help me to escape but only because my king guided them to doing so. Nick from Signs and Wonders, he tried to help. He tried to help people like Everett here not be defrauded by known felons again. But as you can see, it hasn't worked. But for each and every individual out there that did what I had requested, humbly, then our King's Channel, you can see, it's been like a month since I had... It's been like a month since I had brought out a video. However, as you can see down in the description, I had requested everybody that come and watch the video. I was live on the Signs and Wonders channel, and I was also live here on Netzerim Assembly, aka Zoom at Noon, with Sparkanu as Ya. Yeah. And I got in there somewhere around four hours into their conversation. I asked all these good Christian people to go to our King's channel and to copy and paste all these emails into an email and send it off to everyone. And for all of those who did as I had asked, I want to give you a gift, my friend, of $250,000 each. So keep the email in the center, whatever, so that you can show me. And once Texas is given to me, and I don't mean given, I already own it. I'm just being denied it because of obstructions of justice. And they even tried to murder me because they know I own it. And my friends, 
for your doing so prior to this video being posted. All of you who helped me to help those such as Everett, Tripodus, and all the other people across the earth today that are being attacked by known domestic terrorists and we're trying to be told that it's all right because nobody cares. Well, my friends, when I do get Texas, second exodus takes place. All who desire to give up their self-righteousness and they do so will be welcome. And until then, my friends, know that I love you. In my king's love, I am praying for you always. And therefore, till our next video, bye.